He was the rogue kid who became the the running superstar, the world famous runner, who became the soldier, who became the 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 castaway on a raft, who became a prisoner of war, and then had this this religious experience at the end of his life. And and so there was there's so much to talk about with him. And what I did, I mean, I wrote I wrote the story in a chronological manner, but I I wanted to pull something out to use as a preface that would capture something about who he was. So what I pulled out was this moment when he he was a castaway on a raft after his plane crashed, and he's he was starving to death. There are two other men on the raft, and a plane flies over, and they think it's an American plane, and they start waving, thinking they're going to be rescued, and the men on the plane start shooting at them, and it turned out it was a Japanese bomber. And Louis dove overboard, and there are sharks in the water. And the sharks start attacking him. And, and that was the moment I began the book with. Um, All he could see in every direction was water. Yeah. It was late June 1943, somewhere on the endless expanse of the Pacific Ocean. Army Air Force's bombardier and Olympic runner Louis Zamperini lay across a small raft, drifting westward. For wow. 40, for 47 days, all he could see was water. He was, I, he was uh, in millions and millions and millions of square miles of the Pacific. He was out there on a tiny little raft, starving to death. When they were on the raft, you mentioned it twice, about how they sang on the raft and that they sang Christmas music. Yeah. Well, one of the things that they were very worried about when they ended up on that raft was that they would, they would lose their minds. So these guys, Louis especially, they wanted to focus on keeping their wits about them. And they did everything they could, telling each other stories, asking each other questions, constantly keeping their minds working. And one of the things that Louis did was teach the other two the words to the, to the song White Christmas, Bing Crosby's song, which was at that time, uh, that year anyway, was a big hit. It was, a, it was a new song. And so they were out there in June and July on the Pacific singing to an audience of sharks, White Christmas. I don't think I'll ever consider that song the same way again. I don't think I will either. Yeah, it, it was so meaningful to them. All those little things that, that kept them sane, and it did keep them sane. And they, they lost half their body weight. They went through horrible things. They were attacked by sharks. They were attacked by a plane. But they never lost their wits. May your days be merry and bright. And may all your Christmases be white. 